Lausanne, what's going on with you, bro? I appreciate you for joining up, me today man? for this uh, hey, appreciate- conversation, man. How you doing, brother? Yeah, good, doing good, man. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come on here and just have a, a combo, man. Of course, man. Man, I've been, I've covered you a lot, bro. I've talked about you a lot <laughs> on my channel, right? Yeah. And yeah. a lot of the stuff that I've talked about, like, it's been, a lot of the stories have been negative, right? And you, yeah. you know that just based off of the conversations we've had, like the little interactions we've had, nothing is personal, right? It's just... You're, no, you're, no, not at all, not at all. Right, like you're this young rapper blowing up, getting all this success. And part of me was like, ah, yeah. damn, I don't... A lot of the stuff that I saw from you, like I, I didn't I didn't like the some of the things that... the the idea of a Lausanne, like the concept of a Lausanne, right? But, yeah. But like as I'm talking to you, like right now, I'm feeling a lot of good energy from you. You've grown a lot, <laughs> bro, you. throughout these last couple of years, right, as a person. And a lot of people yeah. might look at your career. You might not be at the top or anything like that, right? But you've had yeah. a lot of trials and tribulations in your personal life, in your career. You've gone through a lot of viral, a lot of viral moments that we've all covered. We mm-hmm. all know about some of them we're going to touch mm-hmm. on today and talk about some of the lessons. Yeah. But right now, I just want you to talk, I want you to give me kind of like an insight into, you know, a lot of people are going to click on this, right? And yeah, they know parts of you because they've seen you involved in all these stories, but they don't really know who the person is behind the name Lausanne. Like they don't know who the actual person is. So my goal for this conversation is just for people to get to know you better and kind of talk a lot about the the growth you've gone through in the last couple of years. So mm-hmm. First of all, I want to thank you for coming on here, bro. I appreciate you and your time. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, man. And yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit about like, how are you doing? Give me like a little bit of insight into how are you doing today? Today, And then like, maybe we can connect it to some of the things that you've been through. And then maybe talk a little bit about some of your trials and your tribulations. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Well, uh, like you said in the beginning, um, yeah, I've been watching the videos, I mean, if years now, you know, um, very, very good work. You put in a lot of work into it, man, and it shows. And obviously, you have a a huge, you know, fan base that that tunes in to to see what you have to say, to see what your opinion is. You know, your opinion is is valuable in the community, which is super dope. Um, and and if, as far as like the the negative videos, at the time, if I was upset or mad back then, that was just because I was like a naive young kid. Um, I hadn't fully, you know, grown up or matured yet to understand that, you know, like just to understand how things work and to not get so mad at at people. You know, I'm a, I was like I'm a celebrity, so of course people are gonna dissect and and you know it's like it's not like you're the first person that you know made a negative video on me and I just have to accept that, you know, the things that I did in the past, like of course someone's gonna cover that it was wild you know i still can't believe about some of the stuff that i did back then so all that's all love um but as far as how i've been you know recently yeah i've been better than i ever have in life you know uh, getting sober i've been sober now for almost almost two years not not oh, not quite there but almost um and yeah no at, at the at the beginning it was very difficult very difficult going through the withdrawals and and I had a I've told a lot of people this uh, publicly and privately I I had a bunch of seizures that um, really shook my world up and and in a way I'm I'm kind of glad I had them I mean as traumatizing as they were it, I look I look back at it and it's like I'm glad that they kind of happened because it was such a big wake up call I I feel like if I hadn't maybe had such a shock like that, like something like a, like a near-death experience, I might have still maybe, unfortunately, been going down the road of, you know, substance abuse and, and my mental health probably wouldn't have been where it's at today. So as bad as, as the, that was, you know, I'm, I'm, it was a wake-up call. Uh, I was getting real skinny. I, I've, I'd been skinny before, but this was like a whole nother level of it. Um, I was like in a psychosis, like I was seeing shit like, man, bro, it's crazy because like you see those crazy like homeless people or tweakers that are just in their own world and you're like, damn, bro, like how how did it get that bad? But I saw like a glimpse of it when I was withdrawing from Xanax because you, you uh, this doesn't happen all the time, but some people can go through psychosis with, you know, it's just you're lost in your own 
you're basically sleeping while awake. It's kind of, it's wild, you know? So I was like saying things that didn't make sense to like uh, my girlfriend at the time and my family. Uh, and then I was just like, yeah, speaking gibberish. And they're like, they thought I was messing around. They're like, what, what is what is going on? Uh, he's just high or something, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I was in my own little world um, and it, it was terrible. It was horrible, you know? But I, I made a conscious decision. I'm like, yo, I, I have two options right now. I, I can either continue and, and go for maybe maybe another year, but if I'll, I'm gonna die soon, you know, I probably wouldn't even make it a year from that point. So I, you know, I with the seizures, plus just being so jaded and tired of, uh, you know, just being on drugs for like five, six, seven years. I don't even know. Uh, I, it was time to you know to change and and thank God, thank. God, man, because I, I like I said, I, I feel good, man. I feel really good. And, you know, I got a new house. Like, everything just started coming together once I got sober. And, and I'm just very grateful, you know, man, a lot to unpack, bro. Damn, I, I was just trying. Yeah, to, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Like, I, I really commend you for being you're so open minded with like you're so you're very open with how you talk about it. And I can tell that a lot of those things that happened, you know, served as a lesson for you. And the fact yeah. that you can kind of look back on it. I mean, let, let's actually, let me, let me, let's take it here. Cause like, I want to talk about sobriety. I want to talk about addiction. Mm -hmm. Like those are things that you, you were addicted. Like you yeah. were addicted. You've spoken about this. You, you were addicted oh, to Xanax. Yeah. You were popping so a bad. lot, right? So you're popping a lot of these <laughs> pills. So there's a lot of young people out there, bro, who, mm -hmm. who they get into this and they don't really know the consequences, like the real repercussions of it. So Let's hit on a little bit of that. Like, so when it was really bad for you, right? Like when you were yeah. in the worst place as far as your addiction, keep painting that picture for me. And then what were you thinking in the moment? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I remember I, I could, I, yeah, I instantly know what, what, what to go to when you say that. I was, uh, I was living um, with my friend at the time in the Valley, uh, the greater Los Angeles area. And, um, uh, this is, I, I had only, I had only started smoking Percocets like for the last couple months. I had never done that uh, prior in my addiction. So that's like kind of a reference. You can, to, you can smoke per Percocets? You can smoke <laughs> Yeah, bro. You can smoke Percs. Damn. Yeah, you can, I had yeah. no clue, bro. Damn. Um, oh, man. Yeah. It, and, and I had never done it like the years of being addicted to opiates, never done it. But the last two months I, I met some like real bad people just you know not good for me people but you know they were feeding me drugs so i thought they were great people um and and then i i ran out i, I you know it, it was so hard to get it at a certain time like uh, just my dealer my plugs were lagging whatever so i started to go through withdrawals and I, I was dating this other girl at the time and i'm literally in the room like rumble like rifling through like tinfoil just to smoke like the residue off just so i can like make it like another just two hours before my next hit and then like she gets up leaves my ass instantly breaks up with me so i'm all sad and then like i'm just sitting in here with this tinfoil and this little like uh, like pookie and i'm just like oh my god i look in the mirror and I, I had a like revelation. I'm like, yo, I have to stop. Like my girlfriend just left me. I'm a mess. Like I, I'm skinny. I look terrible. And that that moment is when I was like, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to stop for a few days. And that's what led into the seizures after a, a few days of uh, the pills finally being out of my system. That's when it all happened. But that can, was can the worst what, moment. Wait, can I ask you what, what year was this, by the way? Sorry, sorry to cut you off, but like what this, year was this? No, yeah, this was like the beginning of 2019. Yeah, the okay, very beginning okay, so, of 2019. So the beginning of 2019, and then you blew up in 2017, like September, October, November, right? Yeah, that's when yeah, the yeah. That's came out. yeah, that's when things yeah started to go well. So you're essentially like you're a year and some, like six, seven months, whatever, into your career. And then this is when the worst time of your addiction was happening. And yeah. And so in the moment, so was had you previously checked yourself in rehab or was you know did you do it then? That, that I'm glad you brought that up actually. Uh I was with a a, a previous management team that, that wasn't so good uh for just my well being in the past. And they had they had brought up the idea of going to to rehab, but when I look back at it in retrospect, I think that they were just trying to get media coverage. Like they wanted me to go on TMZ 
and, and they just wanted me to be like seen viral or doing the TMZ thing. So when I asked them, I was like, yo, am I actually going to rehab? They just kind of just do it off like, oh, yeah, you know, we don't need that. You know, we don't need that. And, you know, it, yeah. So I guess like I tried or maybe I don't know. I, I just had a shitty team in the past. Um, but, you know, so no, when I first went to rehab, that was on my own like volition. I was like, OK, I used my own money. Uh, to go, it was like ten thousand dollars every time, and I went four times to a detox program and one time to an actual like rehab facility. Um, but God bless just the detox uh, aspect of 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 getting help because they they helped me taper off safely, so there was no seizures, um, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, and that was about like the beginning of like eh, let's say let's say beginning of like twenty twenty one is when I started to maybe start getting help maybe a little bit before that um but yeah so in the past no but before yeah i did go a couple times okay can i ask you this like when it comes to so like one thing i always think about is like when someone is like a celebrity and they're famous right mm. they have a lot of things going on publicly they have a lot of people saying things about them publicly and then they might be going through things privately and yeah. so you're going through all this privately right mm -hmm. so the question i have is like how does it, does it, what's the word, exacerbate? Like, does does the fame exacerbate? Does it make it worse? Yeah. Like oh, the, what you're yeah. going through, like, the, how, like, can you talk about that? Like, what's the, how much worse is it to go through something privately without the world knowing and then, like, being in the spotlight? Like, how do you balance that? Like, what's the effect? Yeah. Oh, man. You know, that that's that's the that's the golden the thing right there, man, is, is trying to find that healthy balance, you know, and that's something that I absolutely did not have. I had no balance whatsoever. Like we always talk about this being like my close friends, like when you know, and this 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 isn't just for me. This is anybody who gets a lot of money real early and a lot of fame real early in life. If you don't have like the proper guidance, you know, like whether that be just a mentor or a whole team of people that, you know, are looking out for your best interest. If you don't have that in the beginning, oh man, bro, you're just going to run wild with this money, just spending it on whatever, Louis Vuitton, this, Gucci, that, um, drugs over here, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I unfortunately didn't have uh, like a good, well, I thought I had a mentor, but it turned out it wasn't such a mentor. It, w it was someone that, like an enemy. Um, and, and, you know, it, and I didn't have that. So I had no balance whatsoever. Uh, the balance part is something that I finally learned when I got sober. So like, basically like two years ago, I had to like relearn how to like, even just be like a, a an adult, a human being. I had missed out on so many years of, of just growing because of drugs and being around, around the people that were hurting my mental state. Um, but for your question, yeah, no fame. It, it, it does make it probably a lot. I can only imagine, because obviously I, I don't know what it was like to grow up. I was so young when it happened, so I've just been used to this. But I, I would have to say 100%, if you don't have the right guidance or the right counsel, you know, around you, yeah, yeah, it's almost impossible to find that healthy balance because it's really hard, um, especially in the beginning when you're not used to, you know, people coming up to you and, and I had, I dealt with anxiety problems. So I'm the last person on paper that should be going in front of thousands of people and doing this. But I eventually learned though, you know, um, I, you know, it's like, I know how to do it pretty easy now. My anxiety is not really a problem, but yeah, it, it was bad. It was bad, especially in the beginning. Mm, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. When you look back on our time, by the way, I want to ask you, how much and just just a open ended question like how much let's say like I guess like responsibility accountability you kind of take like do you take accountability and responsibility for like everything you went through or do you look at it as you were like a young artist who was a, a product of the environment a product yeah. of the industry because the oh. industry is very dark yeah. and evil there's a lot of bad things about the industry that I don't like I speak about speak about it but like what's the what's the do you, you get what I'm, what I'm asking? Like, no, how I know, much... I know what you mean. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. I, like, um, I, no, no, no. I definitely don't blame, uh, just being in a bad deal or like, a uh, you know, I, I'm a human being and as a human being, we make mistakes. You know what I mean? Maybe some of it was definitely probably caused by that, but I, as a human being just wasn't as mature as I am today. You know, that was years and years ago. 
So no, maybe not everything. I definitely am to blame for a lot of some of the stupid stuff that was out there. Um, yo, so yeah, I'll, I'll hold my, myself accountable and all that when, when it makes sense, you know, I'm just pointing out rather just things that, that I, you know, didn't help, I guess, uh, that, that exacerbated like everything and made it worse, you know, but no, when, when, when I'm to blame, bro, I'm the, I'm the first person that's like taking accountability, especially more now at this point, I'm like, yeah, but you know, uh, that's why right now I'm, I'm trying to grow not only as like an artist uh just like human being on a human level you know i, I just want to mm, be yeah, yeah like I, i'm just growing up you know yeah no that's that's really important bro. i just i i, I was just asking you that and i wanted you to speak on it because you know there's going to be people who listen to this and then they're going to be like oh is he not taking accountability for for this you know yeah. for the stuff that he went through and i just wanted i just wanted you to say that just so oh there's yeah no confusion no right? i'm glad you brought that up yeah no no i'm 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 anytime you think it's me it's probably me <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that response. But but so like being a young artist, man, like blowing up, getting all this fame, all this money, you know, and then getting into drugs and then and then all this attention on you, like it does something to you as as someone who's young, who's probably not prepared to handle it. Like mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of the a lot of the stuff that you went through, you know, was a lot of that stuff happened because you were put in this position where, you know, like you dropped music yeah. and then boom, like now you're famous overnight and you're getting all this clout. You're like, you're getting all this boost and clout and people know you now. And it's like, you go from literally nobody knowing you to everybody knowing yeah. you. So from nobody to like, somebody. what's the, yeah, exactly. Essentially like overnight. I yeah. mean, I remember when Betrayed came out, it was, like, I remember it the was place. overnight. Yeah. It was, it was like, I had been rapping like for, you know, like a year before, but not almost more like as a hobby kind of like if it happens it happens but yes but when when betrayed came out it was like uh, overnight i i was taken back i was like what is going on like i remember that feeling of like uh wow this can really happen you know like i didn't i thought i was dreaming i kept pinching myself as stupid as that sounds but i, I really just couldn't believe it um and yeah, when you go from a nobody to a somebody, like I wasn't a popular kid in high school, you know, I wasn't getting all the girls in high school for the time I was there, you know, or anything. Um, so yeah, it was a big, just like life shift from being that person to, oh, now I'm Lil Xan and I make music and, and everybody wants to be around me. And, and the problem with that is you have a lot of bad people that could come into your circle, a lot of yes men, a lot of people that you know you you know it, it it took years to to finally wean out like all the bad people in my life and anybody that was just not there for for anything good but yeah no it was it was like night and day it was like nobody wanted to talk to me and then oh wow mr popular is it's like the craziest thing can I ask you can I ask you how hard is it to because, you know, this is something a lot of artists, they talk about. They talk about the yes-men of the industry. They talk mm -hmm. about the people who come around them. And I've seen it, too, with my own eyes. Like, yeah. artists, an artist blows up, gets a little traction, and then boom. The next year, it's like, a lot of times they're unrecognizable because there's a bunch of people who come around them, and then they allow them into their circle who tell them things yeah. that are not good for them. And then, and then they validate an aspect of them that may not necessarily be that productive no, for that, themselves as a human being, yeah. as, a, as an artist, right? Yeah, you're spot so on can, with can, that. Can, to, so the question I have is like, how, like, can you maybe describe a little bit of, this is like a trap for a lot of artists, bro. Like so many young artists, they fall victim to this. Yeah. I'm, and I want you to kind of like, what's the, paint the picture for us. Like, what does that look like? And what are some of the lessons that you learned from how that could, like, how can you stop from that becoming like a thing? Yeah. I, yeah no, another good question. And I think it, it, it goes back to, again, having a good team around you. And, and when I say like a good team, I mean like, a manager that actually cares about you on a human level more than just, oh, okay, like this is business, business, anything that's just business, business, you're going to have yes men all up the ass on that. Like I, I would have like label execs, all these people just like, you know, trying like exactly what you said is so spot on where people will come into your group and it could be an A&R, it could be an exec, it could be from your own label too, or your own team, but they'll start planning these little ideas and then, like you said, validating them until an artist that a year ago is a completely different artist than like next year. And then a completely different artist. And sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but that that's it right there is when you see artists like 
And I can I can see I can think of artists right now in in the industry that are doing it. I'm not gonna name any, but same here. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, you know here. what I mean. No names, no names. Yeah, yeah. no names. But uh, you can see it. It's ridiculous. It's like that is not the same person. And and yeah, it goes back to just yes men, bad people. A lot of them are just people are obsessed with clout and and fame. And even if they're not famous they're, themselves, if they see anybody shining, doing something music-wise, whatever, industry-wise, they're blowing up. They will try, and not everybody, just certain people that, that you know, are, like, addicted to the clout. Like, they will try, they will do anything to 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 surround themselves with that. I don't know what it is. It's, it's like a fucking, clout is like an invisible fucking aura, dog, or some shit, like, that it just, like, it, it attracts good and bad people, but a lot more bad people, and, and that's the problem is, is weaning now like okay this person uh their intentions are pure they don't have ulterior motives but most of the case no i've had i've had to deal with hundreds of people with ulterior motives nefarious you know ideas and 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 thank god that i am where i'm at now with the team and and the the family that i have around me because now i don't even see bad i don't even leave my house you know i'm a homebody so i'm always just just home chilling um but that was a big problem in the past for me and and again, speaking for other artists, like we can see it happening right now in the industry. So I think that's just one of the the, the curses of the industry. Just one of one of many of them, you know, that that probably will be around as long as music is around. It's unfortunate unless someone can, you know, get up there and change the change the narrative. Absolutely, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like as I'm as I'm saying, I really like what you said too. Like these are like these are the traps of you know, the traps of the industry, yeah. the traps that a lot of rappers, you know, fall into, like the clout, the fame, all the attention, the money, and then boom, you have a bunch of people come around you, yeah, right? That's crazy. And one thing one thing I do want to bring up kind of like what you said, just feeding off of what you said, but one way I think artists can protect themselves is by making sure that they are good first, yeah. right? And I say and I say that because, you know, I think tell me if I'm wrong by the way, but part of the reason maybe why you attracted a lot of these people too is because you know, I like to say that, you know, predators can see when the prey is mm -hmm. weak. And so, like, you were, like, you were heavily into the drugs. Mm. and No. Do you think part I was of weak, that, yeah. Do you think part of that? Yeah, no, literally. Like, that. that's a good analogy right there is, uh, and, and when you say predatory, it, it was that type of, that type of fucking vibe I was getting, like, after a while with, with more or less, like, the, I had a bad, like, I keep saying it, but I had a bad team in the past, you know, that that so yeah like when you say you know i had like a bad management i don't think anyone looks at that and says oh he's blaming things that are outside of his control because a, a ma yeah. the management has a lot of control so you can continue by the way i'm sorry to cu for cutting you off but oh no 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 yeah you're good but um yeah speaking of that you know you're like the bad yeah uh when we're talking about predatory stuff and and there's people that are you know predatory too that have all bad you know motives and stuff but going back to like the team i had when i when i had i, I wish that i could redo how i said the things that i said when i was on live going back to you know saying these crazy things about my old team and stuff i was on drugs when i said that so obviously everything i i said in that like live was just scrutinized and and, and people weren't taking me serious but as they should you know i i look crazy on live so it makes a lot of sense but what sucks about that is i was there was a lot of truth though in that you know and but that, that didn't seep through it was just oh man you know uh Lil Xan trying to throw everybody else under the bus for his drug uh, habits or his drug issues. When I I was trying to tell everybody, no, no, no. Like, my old team, they didn't, they're not the reason I'm a drug addict. I, I was already on drugs before, but they, like, fed me drugs, like, heavily. They would buy it for me. They would ship it overseas when we were on tours, you know. And I felt like that was fucked up, you oh, know what wow. I mean? Oh, yeah. But, Can we talk a little bit about that, too? Like... Damn, yeah, sounds, yeah, of course. Like, I know Lil Peep, like his mother, she was fighting the case, right? And and I talked to her too when this was all happening because I felt like fucking, I felt like 
I, you know, I, we had a lot in common, you know, obviously, all right, rest in peace to Peep, that's a, that's a terrible situation, and if, if you know a little bit more, you know that he didn't have too good of a team, per se, around him, I don't know any, anything, but that's just what, you know, I've seen. Yeah, I mean, but that's, that's I had so for sure, yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, 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 definitely, you know, I'm just, not, yeah, but I had something very similar in that aspect, so when I, when I heard that story, I, I very much, I was still going through it, you know, so, but I gravitated towards that that I was just like, yo, that reminds me of a lot of what's going on in, in my camp right now um, with, with, the, with the people just feeding me drugs. And if we were on tour, you know, because the, their mindset was we need him on drugs because if he's not on drugs, he's going to be withdrawing. And he can't perform if he's withdrawing. And he can't do interviews if he's withdrawing. So, like, we'll figure out the drug situation later, but we need to get him on drugs. You know what I mean? So, no, no, they didn't. They didn't call, they, they weren't the first people to introduce a fucking Zan to me or a fucking, no, no, no. It's not like that. But did they amplify instead of trying to help me? A hundred and fucking one percent they did that. And that's what pissed, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, but. Um, I believe you, bro, because like, if you had more to say, you, you can say about it. I don't want to cut you off. You can keep going. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I was just going to say, no, no, you you could talk. I Yeah, I said everything. Okay, now I was just going to say about how like this is. And a very important point, because like what the music industry usually does is, you know, when they see that someone is vulnerable, they they create a very bad environment for them. So they fall. So they fall into that bad. Tra it's a trap. I mean, this what you're talking about is what you're talking about is they create a very destructive environment for the artists, like kind of what, what the little people is going through. And then wh whether it's with drugs or anything else, right, like specifically with drugs, because the thing about drugs is. They make you very, like it kind of shuts off your they mind make you almost. Pray, like you said, they make you weak. You e know? Exactly. And, that's, that, and so if you're and if like, you're on it, yeah. like you're easily you're easily controlled. And so if you're off exactly. of it, you're gonna be able to think clearly. Yeah, and that's what they don't like. Th that's like a perfect way to put it, bro. And that's that's what they they don't want you to ever get a, a little ounce of above them or smart. They want to keep you. You know, I always say this, it's easier to control like a dead artist than it is an alive artist. Again, not going to name any people, but how they handle some people, some dead artists music after they die is fucked up and is terrible. Absolutely. And, and, and it speaks volumes to, the, to like the kind of people that were behind that that person. So like if so I'm not going to name anybody, but someone dies and then their team has a horrible rollout. They're still putting out music five fucking years later. That's not a good team, bro. I personally, I just don't think it is, you know. But what yeah, happens to stuff it, like that. In a lot of those cases too, you know, the sh family gets shut out, and so the family has no like. Obviously, you know, they're not really on a contract, so obviously they're not going to have any control over the music technically. But oh, they yeah. also shut if out. They're signed to a major label. Oh my god, it, yeah, it's it'll it, it's one hundred percent never going to be in the favor of the family or the estate yeah never it's terrible exactly no it's it's horrible man and th those are things that you know just like you said like you're more you're more useful when you're dead or when you're on drugs than when you're exactly. alive and like on you have your sober mind the thing is there's oh. there's so much power in being a young artist like you right now like right now you're awake you're awake bro so you can you can carefully assess any situation that comes to you in the industry mm -hmm. And now you can't be fooled because you're not on no drugs. You're not easily controlled. You're not easily manipulated. You've you've no. you've been a. Have you been to therapy by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been. I've been. It's it's very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So you've been to therapy. You've you know like you're you're not you're not addicted anymore. And so now you you can't be controlled. And like now you know better. And now you have this healthy ecosystem around you that's gonna support you and prop you up to become. The strongest, strongest version of yourself, and I think that's what more young artists need. You know? Yeah. No. I'm. I mean, I agree a hundred percent. Like, and and speaking on that, like, I know obviously I'm nowhere where I was obviously in 2018, but to me that doesn't even matter because I'm healthy and I still have a huge like hardcore fan base that is that like waited for me almost to get healthy, and 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 it just feels good that I finally am able to make. The music I want to make for the people I want to make, and and just to not have you know that that attachment to such just bad just bad juju, whatever it is, man. You know, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm in a good place. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Speaking of that, can you, can you talk a li- can you talk a little bit about that? So, you know, I did make a video that has like a million views about Lozan the fall off. Right? I don't know if you've seen that video, but I remember when I like I, it, it was not just you. It was like a bunch. It was like a bunch of people, and they still. I feel like there's a video every month of me falling off. I'm like, <laughs> how do I fall off every month? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually funny. No, so <laughs> I want I want to talk a little bit about like that concept of like falling off as as an artist. So like, there's a lot of people who they're they're gonna see this. They're gonna be like, oh, Lil Xan, the guy who fell off, right? But like, yeah. When when you're in this place and you're you're people are saying this, like, do you as an artist do you feel like because pers- on a personal level, you're doing better than ever. So I'm talking to you and I'm like, okay, he may not be relevant and in and, and the public, yeah. he might felt, might have fallen off. But you know what's better than that? What's better than that is that you have on a, on a, on a, on a personal level, you're doing better than ever. So yeah. you could be the hottest artist on the planet, but you can mentally be fucked up. But for you, it's and the like, opposite. The point? You were hot yeah. and then you were fucked <laughs> up, but now it's like you're not hot, but now you're doing better mentally. So I say yeah. that the position you're in now is better because you at least you're do you're, you're doing better as a person. So yeah, I like I like the way you put I like I like the way you put that. That that's totally accurate. Um, yeah, at first you know you know like let let's go back to like you know when 2018 everything is super hot everything is going crazy. Uh, yeah, mentally I'm not doing good at all. But yeah, I'm super high and famous right now. So it's almost like you can't even enjoy it to like a full degree. But now, yeah, like I still make music and still have this, but not where I'm at with, in 2018. But now I have a clear mind, and and w- what a clear mind can add to my life is now I can make, in my opinion, better music. Now I'm not saying that the past was bad, but now I can make the music I want to make. I can try to get back to a good place. Like I don't have to be where I was in 2018, but I, I now I can strive to just keep evolving with my discography, my sound, my music, and start experimenting with that. And I know I'll get back to a, a pretty high level there because I have like motivation, determination, of, I believe in manifestation. And now that I'm healthy and sober, you know, I feel like, yeah, like the shackles have been broken and and I could finally, you know, achieve what I couldn't even achieve back then because I was so fucked up off everything, you know, imaginable. Um, and, and, and going back to, yeah, like people saying, you know, oh, he fell off at first. When I started to see a lot of the videos like Lil Xan fall off, whatever, all these videos, I'm not going to lie. At first, yeah, it did hurt me. I was still on substances, though, just keep in mind, but like it did hurt me like I was like damn bro this is it like as an artist I felt like it has been I felt like you know all these thoughts of course because I'm an artist that it's like you just want to keep you know going higher and higher so it, it did hurt me for a while but once I got sober again bro it all started with just getting sober once I was sober I could finally fucking see clearly bro I could understand I'm like whoa these people they, you know, they don't mean harm, bro. They're just doing their job. They're just doing what, what they do. People have taught, like, they're not the first people to talk about me, and they're not the last people that will talk about me. So, yeah, honestly, it all started when I got sober. I know it's cliche, but once I got sober, everything made sense. I, I stopped being so angry at the world for my own problems. I started to I started to stop blaming people for my own problems. Um, and, and I just I accept where I'm at in life. But I have, like I said, I have that determination. I know I'll go far in music and anything I do in life because I have that determination and I've already done it once. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again, you know? Yeah. No, I like I like how much you have. You're very optimistic about the future. That's really important. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day too, bro, like you're you're very young. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you're, only, you're, you're 25 right now, right? 26, yeah. Oh, 26. Okay, yeah, 26. My bad. So no, you're, you're So like you're very young. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You blew up at, yeah. uh, at like you blew up at like what, 20, right? Yeah, like 20, 21. And yeah, so I have that youth, you know. I mean, of of course, and like you're sober now. Like the the, the thing is like the fact that you're so the fact that you were at that place like you literally lived up your name, like Lozan. You know? I know that's fucking yo. I, <laughs> you know yo, hey, if, if someone <laughs> could give me at least one prop, bro, at least, if someone had to be Lozan, it was the right person at least, yo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. So like the thing is too is like that was a different version of you like you're popping for a reason that's probably not you today because no, i'm no. sure you probably don't and i've seen you talk about this before but i'm sure you probably don't even 
relate all that much to the name of Lausanne. You 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 talked about you want to go by the name of Diego, right? Like that's yeah, that's your name. Yeah, so. yeah. It felt it felt more you know organic, and I mean that's my name, you know, and and it just I hadn't seen I'd seen other rappers like Diego Money and other people with Diego in it, but just Diego, I was like that, that has a ring to it. I don't know that many Diegos, so it's kind of cool and unique. Uh, because yeah, Lil Xan, when I first had that name, I was like, this name's fucking stupid as hell too. I thought the same shit. I was like, there's no way anybody can make a career. Like I really thought that. I was I, I was almost using the name like back then it was like the dumber your nickname was, the cooler you were. You know what I mean? So like this yeah. is the early SoundCloud era. We have like Lil Pump, like you know, all this shit, like just ridiculous names. And I was like, Oh, I'll be Lil Xan. Um, as a joke, but it fucking stuck and, and that's it just, worked. Yeah, it, it worked. Like it worked, bro. And I, yeah, and I was, I was even myself. I was like, no fucking way, bro. They're gonna like, they're gonna give anybody radio time with that name, or yeah, it was crazy just seeing that whole thing uh, unfold. But hey, I mean, shit, anything can happen, I guess. I mean, for sure. Yeah, it's just funny how it actually worked. Literally, it's literally worked, bro. But literally, bro, <laughs> we gotta make like a movie one day about that. No, for sure, bro. For sure. Yeah, shit. Your story is not there's more to more to more to be more to be done. But um yeah. can I ask you about this, bro? Like I, I find the concept of being famous so interesting, right? Mm. Like I just I, I've always found it really interesting how you're famous and then there's a bunch of people all around the world who know you and who, you know, unfortunately I don't think it should be like this, but you know, people put you on a pedestal. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you know all about what comes with that. So mm. I wanna ask you, like, when it comes to you're famous like people know you so like what what is it like first of all what is it like being famous at a young age and then what does that really do to your brain yeah um you know that i'm definitely so used to it now uh being like six years into it um but i still when i leave the house i i still know for a fact i'm, I'm gonna take a gang of pictures when i leave the house like uh if i go to the pet store or just a restaurant uh, it's always at least a couple people taking the picture. So I'm still like getting that a lot, even to this day. Um, it, it's like a, I guess the best way I can describe it, it, it's like a, it's a hell of a drug, bro. Like, especially in the, more in the beginning. Now, like I know how to, you know, I, I know how to balance everything. I don't have an ego, but more towards the beginning of my career, I had a little bit of an ego. I was a little cocky, but I mean, could you blame me? Like, you know when everything is handed to you like that and you're a nobody it's it was crazy you know but um yeah it, it, it'll fuck with you bro I, I always said like clout was like a hell of a drug in the beginning man it felt like this i'm a i used to be a drug i'm a former drug addict and i still haven't found a drug like clout ever since the beginning bro it it, it was like this it's crazy right it's like a fucking this like drug that, it's like this thing that just like it fills you like you just get like Oh man, I don't know. It's crazy, bro. But it, it definitely, it uh, if you if you don't handle it right, you know, it can it can cause you a lot of harm, obviously, and a lot of a lot of bad can come with uh from that. But it, it's that's I don't know, man. That's the best way I can describe it. Is is like it's just a hell of a drug that I still haven't even encountered to this day, nor probably will. Mm. Interesting. You said something about how like it kind of like I guess like fills you up, and I want to ask you a question about that, right? Like, would you say that? Because how I look at it is like. If you're someone who it may be safe to assume that, you know, since things happened the way it happened and you had these trials and tribulations in your career, you know, part of you still felt like you didn't really know who you were. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like exactly. Going back again in the beginning of the combo, I said that uh, I, I couldn't like I did. I Once I got sober, I was finally able to to learn like not only how to become like an adult, but learn myself, you know, like there, there was a lot of years of absent, you know, of, of just learning myself and, and learning, you know, just core things that everybody normally goes through. But since I was so clouded by all the, the fame and then and, and being on the road all the time, I didn't have time to ever just take a step back and and get to know me, you know, and, and that's wow. Yeah, I love that, that you said that. Yeah, no. And I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that that came from sobriety was the, the couple years it took they were hard in the beginning but i i was able to learn a piece of me that i hadn't you know been able to because of you know all the circumstances so it is you know it's just another beautiful thing that comes with uh with sobriety 
Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the point I was trying to make was just like, I think one reason too why you might have put it on, like you, you might have felt like, oh, it was really filling you up is because you kind of had like a lack of, lack like a lack of a sense of who you are on the inside. Yeah. And so the whole world telling you, you know, Lozan, you're this, you're that, you're that. Mm-hmm. What happens is, you know, the human ego is, hey, I don't really truly know who I am or the direction that I want to go in. And so when people are telling me these things, I'm going to, you know, hold on to them and pretend like that's really me. And then that can, that can lead to, you know, that can take you down a dark path because now your your sense of self gets inflated by all these people who don't really even know who you are, right? Yeah. And that's that's kind of like I guess like would you say that that's like the dark side of fame, like especially for someone who's like it's, younger? Yeah, it's it's definitely one of one of the many like dark aspects of you know behind the scenes of fame is is uh yeah you got all these people and you know you could tell who like the diehard fans are and then the people that really like the music and stuff, but but it doesn't matter what yeah because when it turns out it's just a bunch of people saying you know these things about you and yeah for the most in the beginning a lot of it's positive and you start filling your mind but then you know you start getting like the, the the haters a little bit and no matter what kind of artist you are this that you're gonna have haters and you know you'd be lying if you said that like what they say i could i could read a hundred i don't i don't read comments anymore but i could read like a hundred positive comments telling me like this song's dope or you're dope and you're doing good and then just get that one like uh just that one oh you suck or you fell off and it can like neglect the hundred nice things i just read and i'll just focus on that um and that's definitely not just a me problem that's you know uh anybody that's like you don't even have to be famous to go through that problem that's just a human condition problem oh yeah Um, i I can relate to that yeah you know what i mean anybody can it's a bad thing but uh so then when you amplify that instead of like because a normal person, they're only going to like have this close circle of people that they interact with, friends, close family. But when you're like someone like a celebrity or an artist, that, that close circle doesn't exist. Now it's this huge fucking planet of people that have opinions on you and, and all this. And they're sharing ideas about you and talking good, bad about you. So it goes from just that small circle that a normal person is used to. You know, thinking like, oh, I only care about what these people... Now it's like, boom, the whole fucking... I got to think about what, you know, what I do, what I say. Because blogs will pick will pick it up and publications. So it's just about being a little extra careful now and... Uh, just, you know, not saying the outlandish things that I, I, you know, did in the past. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the artists who, just about that, I think the artists who really, you know, succeed are like in, in the midst of having a lot of the fame and the artists who keep their sanity are the ones who have a close group of people mm-hmm. who they can confide in. Yeah. And those people have a, you know, proven track record of being loyal and mm-hmm. consistent with them. Oh, and integrity yeah. and principle and moral level. Like the issue is one of the things with a lot of artists that I see is, you know, you 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 went through this as well, but just you have a bunch of people around you, mm-hmm. or they actually start coming around later. Yeah. And so these people are only there to benefit off of your success. And the worse off you are, mm-hmm. the more they can get because you don't even know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. But if you have like a close group of people around you, who they can tell the real from the fake. What's going to happen is almost like you're going to get, you know, like a little bubble around you to the point where like a shield. They'll, they'll never even get a sh- yeah, shield. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, a like shield. that's like your protection, you know, like the real people around you. They can they can protect you from the people who are trying to come in mm-hmm. and have these ulterior motives because they actually want the best for you. And they're taking actions that feed into you as a person and not take from you as a person. No, exactly. And 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 going back to like like yeah, like you know, there's a lot of bad people, bad teams, bad, you know, the industry's full of like bad every, you know, but yeah, like you said there are, you know, good there is still good teams and, and good people that actually do have good intentions. It's just extremely fucking hard to find in this, you know, godforsaken industry, but they do exist, you know, just to let everybody know. There it's just not all bleak, but a lot of it is, but, you know, you can find good people, too. No, for sure. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, too, I believe in, I believe that like attracts like, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that whatever you really are, like, on a human level and, like, intrinsic level, that's really where you're going to attract. Now, it's not to say that you won't attract people who are bad, 
But whether or not those people stick around, well, that's up to you. Yeah. Like you can make the decision to say, you know what, that person you mentally. The thing is, like you gotta also like be able to mentally place people in a category. Like some people, they come around you, and they're there for a specific reason. Then they just want to take. Mm-hmm. And so if you have if you have that level of understanding with yourself, or you can kind of communicate with yourself and put them in a place, you know, mentally place them in a place of, hey, this person, they're there because they want this. Then you can never really get duped or fooled. Yeah, and and that that's the that's the the whole you know it's just trying to find. I mean, and especially you know, not every artist either is on drugs. That's that's just me. <laughs> but um, you know, but a lot, a, a lot, lot are the majority. Yeah, I want to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, a lot. You know, I would, I'm no, like I, be, you'd be like, well, you already know, but a lot of people would be surprised at like you know how many fucking artists are you know you know, but like I, I'm just saying like a lot of people would be surprised because people are good at hiding it for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, apps a thousand yeah. percent. I, like, see, people uh, like me, percent. no, not good at hiding it. But like other people, oh man, I, even even some people I know in the industry, I never thought were like you know on drugs or anything that people have told me, and I'm like, oh fuck, like I they're so good at like I wouldn't even think that. Anyway, so that aside, Lil Zan, so I wanted to ask you about a few years ago, right? You went through this um, situation. I, I I guess we can call it right. <laughs> yeah, I covered it. It was really big in hip hop media. You know exactly oh, what yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, everybody knows what I'm going to talk yeah. about. So, for anyone who doesn't know, right, Lozanne, he was doing this interview, <laughs> and uh, they essentially they asked you to rate a hip hop legend, yeah. which was Tupac, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, you your response was boring <laughs> and boom yeah just like the bomb oh, it just was went crazy off, so. bro i you know i always make this joke i'm like i i if i would if, if the question would have been like what do you put like on a scale of one to ten like what do you think of jesus and i would have said the same thing nobody would have cared but tupac they're like oh shit yo you can't talk about tupac with jesus <laughs> um yeah oh, man. no oh, you, you know how it is like you're a young young rapper like young white rapper face tattoos you make music you know white white rapper like you oh know yeah yeah like, yeah sen- that's sensitive yeah yeah bro. and especially and talking so, about a legend like that um you know and this is what i, I this is what sure. i tell people about that interview and this is and, and can i get my just take oh yeah yeah, yeah go ahead yeah yeah of course quickly and then and then i just i'll phrase the question so first of all you know like when i saw it i mean i'll be honest with you bro i was like fuck this guy that's what yeah. i thought right mm-hmm. like fuck Lil Z. that's what i thought in my head like what how dare yeah, he right yeah. but that but that was my initial reaction like i didn't first of all i didn't like i I made a video on it but i didn't like the fact that you said Mm -hmm. it right but one thing i do also i did realize was that that was not a lot of insight into how you really felt about Pac. like you were in in an interview and then they asked you a question and then you said boring now i looked at it and i said okay young rapper just came in a game he should have been smarter than to say that that's like a thing where how could you how could you say that in the position that you're in especially knowing the reputation yeah, it, you have right so but when it all when it's all said and done i i knew that there was not any you know hating your heart i mean Pac is a oh, legend yeah. anyone who who anyone in music appreciates Pac, and i'm sure you, oh, you do too as well I, like you talked yeah, about that i grew that. up on old school hip hop i grew up on a little Pac. i'm not going to lie not a lot but I grew up on like yeah. old school De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, Big L, a bunch of great, you know, yeah. artists. And and when I obviously when I made those comments, obviously nobody's gonna think of me as like a, a, a consumer of that type of music. They're gonna be like, oh, he only listens to this new stuff and hate. No, no, it's not even like that. Well, a lot of things that led into yeah, yeah. that interview was uh, I was younger, I was you know just like less experienced. I. I I wasn't very good at interviews yet. It was kind of early on. I hadn't, I had done some, but not a lot. So I didn't understand, you know, like repercussions of things saying, you know, I wasn't even thinking in that headspace. Um, so that was another thing that went into it. I was on drugs. Like, oh man, every time I look at that interview, I'm like, I'm so like, I could just see it in my face. I'm like, I'm so like not there and not good. But, um, you know, yeah, I regret what I said. Like, I didn't mean that at all, obviously. And I, I wish I could, I wish that thing, obviously, you know well you know what i was gonna say i wish it never came out but it when it came out and i got a bunch of hate and it, it fucked me i'm not gonna lie for a long time um but obviously I, I i you know i said some stupid shit so it was well deserved but um yeah no i don't i don't think i don't think that way at all and i but what i did take from that though is i did start a conversation though of like okay like let's you know let's talk about 
does Lil Xan really have to be a fan when he wasn't even alive when Tupac was, you know, like, I didn't even get to witness Tupac's greatest moments. I wish I could have. You know what I mean? That would have been fucking dope. But I wasn't even alive. So I started the conversation, like, why do we have to push, you know, these older generation artists on people that, you know, didn't grow up necessarily listening? But the fucked up thing is, I did grow up listening to old school hip hop, just not so much Tupac. And it, so it turned into this whole thing. But uh, so, yeah, like, yeah. So, you know, about that whole situation, you know, you saying Tupac was boring. To me, yeah. it was kind of just like indicative of, you know, just like your age. I mean, you're a young artist. Yeah. And it kind of told me that, and a lot of people are in, in, in that, there's a lot of young people who might consume hip hop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of people who've seen that and they're standing up for you. And, and I was, I, I say that to say, that was kind of just a disconnect, you know? Like, I look at it as, oh, damn, the fact that Lil Xan, like, boring and Tupac even came out of his mouth. That's that's just a disconnect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, so, that, but then again, I I know that there wasn't that like a no malicious, malicious oh, no, intent. No, but more so just like disconnect. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's I, I like that word you use. Definitely a, a disconnect. You know, and like like I said previously, uh, younger, naive, um, just not in the right head place for that interview. But definitely, at the last thing was any like malicious. You know, I didn't I didn't like have that mindset going in there like. Oh man, I, fuck Tupac. That's just no, no. It was not like that. It was more of I wanted to get the interview done with. You know, I didn't want to be there. I wasn't happy with the interviewer girl. And at the time, I shouldn't have been happy with her because the way they fucking framed that, they they you know like not framed, but the way they like edited the video, it it didn't help. Like it would it would have gone viral no matter what. Yeah. But definitely the way they edited, it, like even saying that like they don't agree with what I said, it was just very. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, you, I'll be honest with you. They did definitely set you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. Like, obviously, I said what I said, and that's stupid. But, like, they had a big part of making... They, they knew what they had, you know? Like, they were like, oh, hell yeah. Like, we're going to fucking fuck with this guy. Um, You know, so, uh, yeah. So, I, w I just wasn't having a good time during the interview. And, and the whole Tupac comments, that's just a reflection of not being in the best place right there, you know? But no, no, no malicious intent, no. Can, can I ask you this? Like, what would you say, like, you learned from that, that whole situation? Is there anything that, that you felt like, oh, wow, I learned this lesson from that whole, so from what you said, yeah. or like from the response? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, the biggest lesson is uh, when you do interviews, you know, you don't speak your mind. <laughs> you know, you got to definitely, depending on the situation and the interview, you know, uh, definitely keep some things or just don't, you, not everything needs to be said, you know. Um, and I guess the, the big takeaway though from it was, uh, you know, actions have consequences and, um, and, you know, I'm very more careful with, with everything I do in life, not even just interviews, just, it was a lesson, you know, like I said, we're all human and I'm, I'd be, I'd be lying to you if I said, I'm not still learning from my mistakes even now. And, and I still will be in 10 years. Um, yeah, I, I, a lot, I took a lot away from it. A lot, uh, a lot of just, uh. Uh, how I do things in regular life and and how I interact with you know in the internet the public um that was the biggest one probably okay okay as far as like I guess like any anything like that's related to like hip-hop and kind of like the conversation of hip-hop and Tupac because I'm sure people want to hear like oh did he learn anything from 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 that because oh yeah some of the answers oh, you yeah. gave me Trust, is more so oh oh oh, oh damn i don't want to say this you get what i'm saying like i want you oh to yeah 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 yeah, like yeah. oh trust me i had i had a bunch of people uh and and these aren't bad people that were like oh fuck you you said this about tupac they weren't like that i mean there was a lot of that don't get me wrong but i had people good people in my life that you know you know sat me down and, and explained explained it better and and that's where that disconnect did, became connected, you know, I guess the best way I can put it. And I started to, you know, realize what I had said and the weight of it. And, and yeah, of course, I, for years I was, I was thinking about it. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. Um, and I still think about it to this day. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I love old school. I, yeah, that's, that's the biggest misconception. I, I, I grew up on East Coast, West Coast, like I said, uh, Big L, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, Biggie. I loved Biggie. Like, yeah, so it was never no hate to the old school. It's, it's all love for the old school at the end of the day, you know, for me. Okay. Okay. Cool. I mean, that's a, that's a good response. That gives us some insight into just also just who you are, too. Like, you're not someone who, you know, I, I've never, you've never struck me as someone who 
has bad intentions you know yeah. like you were just in a very particular time in yeah, your career def- never. that was a time when you know you blew up mm-hmm. and there was a lot of things going on and you, you were on you were on drugs at the moment you didn't have the most productive environment around you you were sitting down for this interview mm-hmm. you know you you said that Pac was boring but i'm sure you didn't mean it like no. i understand you know yeah. so that's just a situation it happened it happened the way it happened and you learned from it so yeah and i mean it's like we can't go back in time you know so if i if i sat here all all, all like Day and night, just you know, thinking, damn, I wish I could change that, you know. As and also speaking on that, a lot of it did a lot of bad, but at the same time, I got like millions of followers on different social media. So I don't even think I'd have it. It fucking it hurt and helped in the weirdest way. Like it, it's the fucking weirdest yin yang. I don't know what to call it. Uh, it was a moment, definitely a moment in my life and in, in hip hop. Mm, of course i mean it's a any viral story you know if i go viral tomorrow shit, you know what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah some people gonna say something and oh, other yeah, people gonna yeah. you know s- salute me for what for whatever it is i hope i don't go viral yeah viral, yeah man. me I don't too want that. but <laughs> but but uh i was gonna ask you this too bro just to kind of wrap up the conversation but just if if you had to explain to people because so there's a lot of people who they're gonna they're click they're, they're clicked on this interview mm-hmm. and they don't really know they know certain things about lozan they you know there's a lot of negative connotations to Lozan, yeah. and I'll be honest with you too, bro. Like before, I spoke to you, I had any interactions with you. Like I just had the idea of Lozan in my mind. So yeah, exactly. I had yeah. some negative, like I had some negative things about mm-hmm. you in my head, and I didn't really know what to expect. But you know, I'll say the interactions that we've had, they've been really positive. Oh, and yeah. You seem like uh, you seem like you have a really positive spirit, and I really do appreciate thank you appreciate uh, that about you. And I do want to say, and I do want to ask you, I should say, you know, for anyone who really doesn't know you, like. What would you tell them? Like, who are you? What's your goal in this world with your music or like who you are, like your presence? Like, what do you what are you exactly intending? What good are you intending to do in this world? I like that question. Um, you know, I, I, I want to help people that have gone through similar experiences, whether it's on on substance abuse or just, you know, uh, mental health. Like, I'm not a, a therapist, obviously, or anything, but I can relate to you know, what it's like to, to not be there or be kind of down on your luck mentally and, and physically with, with the substance abuse. I want to help people, whether it's with my music um, and then being able to, you know, relate to what I'm saying. I, I believe relatability is like one of the most important things as an artist, you know, um, authentic relatability. So you're not just lying about something to get, you know, people you know like actual you know, I've gone through this, so you've gone through this, so maybe it can help. Like that's what I want. So whether it's with my music or anything, like I want to, I I'm very artsy. I, I want to get into directing, you know, films, and I want to get into music production. Um, and art, like, and being an artist is just the base level for me. Uh, as far as how many different outlets I want to get into, I want to be as as an artist. I don't know how to say it, as artist as an artist can be. I want to dabble in my clothing brand and 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 the music and and all this you know i want to but the core the core value though is still like uh i want to help people that are struggling or have struggled with substance abuse whether it's me messaging them a personal i you know i message fans all the time personally if they're if they reply to me and they're going through a hard time you know i i know my purpose in life and it may sound cheesy or or cringy or whatever but i i just want to help people that have gone through similar uh, experiences, whether on a small scale or a massive scale. Um, I just want to help people. Mm. I mean, that's very honorable, man. Like when it comes to making an impact in this world, one of the strongest motivations you could have is just helping people because mm. one day we're all going to be gone. I'm not going to be here, you know, but our spirits are going to live on, Definitely. live on. And so if you can, you know, you know what they say, like people are always going to remember how you made them feel. So yeah, if you can, uh, if you can create a little community, you have a little community all around the world, you know. Yeah. And if if you can just make sure that everyone who touches your community and joins your community in any capacity, you make them feel like they're at home. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have a family all around the world, you know, for life. And so, I say that to say, I see, I see all the good that you're trying to do in 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 a world. I see your growth. You know, I was not really a big fan of Lil Xan, right, before this, <laughs> oh, ever. Yeah. Like, I mean, I made a, I made a lot of negative videos, bro, yeah. you know, so, like, I, and I, I'll good. just say that to say, like, you know, just the concept of Lil Xan, I didn't really like. Yeah, but yeah, it's all the, good, I understand. The, the man, 
you know, the man behind, the actual person behind is, is very uh, a very pleasant person. Thank so you. I appreciate I do want to salute you for staying real to yourself. I want to commend you for beating this motherfucker called addiction. Thank you, man. You know, Thank you. you've grown a lot, man, and you're a different person. And I see your growth, man. I see your light. And I wish you the best in everything you're going to do, bro. And I hope you keep on inspiring the world, bro, yeah. in a positive way. Hey, likewise to you, man. Keep making those videos. Keep uh, changing, you know, the narrative, man. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you, man. Of course, I appreciate you. Well, there is a, an interview with the boy Lozan. Hey, that was dope. I appreciate you guys for dope, dope ass interview. Hey guys, this is Lozan. He used to be a very popping rapper. He still he still has his we'll own community yeah, going. We'll get he's, back to the top. You know, soon. He's, hey, I'm gonna hold you accountable. He's still doing his thing out here. Yeah. You know, and I sat down with him today to just have a conversation about you know the trials, the tribulations, all the things that he's gone through, and so. This man has changed a lot, and I appreciate him for sitting down with me. And I appreciate you, bro. Thank, thank you for thank you for having the me, conversation. Thank you. Great conversation, man. Seriously, I think it's gonna help some people. Oh man, like I said, that's all. That's all I want to do. So I appreciate you giving me the outlet to to come on here and 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 you know spread the message. Of course, thank you so much for being on here, bro. And I'll catch you uh, another time. Okay. Hell yeah.